Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roma Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be implementing the feature of signing into the application with a Google account using Firebase authentication. In this series, I've been building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app. And for this episode, I'll be covering adding a layer of security by allowing users to sign in using a Google account, leveraging Firebase authentication, as well as introducing basic concepts of state management in order to make the logged in user information accessible throughout the app. First, let's create the Firebase project associated with this app in the Firebase console. Under this project, create an iOS app. Make sure the bundle ID is the same as in the generated iOS project from Flutter. Put a friendly name for the app. No store ID for now, then hit register. It gives you the option of downloading the plist file with all the required Firebase configuration for iOS now, but you can do it later. Hit next. Make sure to do these steps in order to set up the Firebase SDK on your iOS native project. We'll do it later. Hit next. Same thing with the initialization code on the iOS app delegate file, which we'll configure later. Hit next. Return to the Firebase console. With iOS app in place, let's add another one this time an Android app. Same as in iOS, make sure that the Android package name matches the one in your Android manifest file. Add a friendly nickname for the app. Later, we'll deal with the SHA-1 certificate fingerprint hash, so hit register app. Let's not download the Google services JSON now, since we need to add the SHA-1 hash, so hit next for now. Later, we'll go through these steps in order to configure the Firebase SDK on our Android project Gradle files. Hit Next. Continue to console. Next, enable Google as our third-party sign-in method by going to the Authentication tab. You have other providers like Facebook, Twitter, etc., but we'll do Google for now. Just click on the Edit Configuration button and Enable. Leave the defaults as is. Revisiting the already created apps in Firebase, it is worth mentioning the importance of having a support email in the Project Settings General tab, so make sure to provide it. iOS configuration file is ready, so just download it. For the Android configuration, however, you still need to provide the SHA-1 hash, otherwise the Google sign-in won't work. This is only for Android. On iOS, it works out of the gate. Generate a SHA-1 hash by firing up your command line, and in your Flutter project, navigate to the Android folder. Execute the command greater w sign in report, and you will get a bunch of certificate fingerprint variants as MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256. Copy the ones from the debug Android test, both SHA-1 and SHA-256. Add them as fingerprint entries in the Android configuration. With these two in place, now we are ready to download the config file. Back in the project, let's set the Flutter dependencies by adding the required packages needed. In the pubspec YAML, add the three packages that we will be using, Firebase Core, Firebase Auth, and Google Sign-In. As of the recording of this tutorial, these were the latest stable versions of these packages, so apply the version accordingly. Save so the packages get installed. Let's start with the Android configuration. Drag the Google Services JSON config file into the Android slash app folder. Go to the build Gradle in the same folder and add the following configuration lines. Go to the build Gradle at the Android project level and add the following configuration lines as well. Let's proceed with the iOS configuration portion. Drag the Google Service info plist file inside the runner project folder. In the app delegate Swift file, add the imports for Firebase and invoke the configure method on the Firebase app instance. One thing a lot of tutorials don't mention is having to add a URL scheme in the info plist file, so I'll do that via Xcode. Open the runner workspace project in Xcode. Go to the info tab and under the URL types section, add the URL scheme, which matches the reversed client ID provided in the Google service info plist file. So copy it from there and paste it here. 
the following steps may be required in some instances. So these are optional, where you may have to regenerate the pod file in iOS manually. First, start by cleaning the project running the flutter clean command. Remove both the pod file and pod file .log files as well as the pods folder. Run the pod init command to regenerate the pod file. At the top of the new pod file, add the pods referring to the dependencies needed to be installed on iOS for our required packages. Save and run pod install and notice the package is getting installed. Let's start by creating the logic that will encapsulate the login functionality. I'll start by creating a folder called services and a file called login service.dart. The class is called login service as well and will encapsulate all the Firebase hooks to perform the authentication against our project in the cloud. In the constructor, make the call to the Firebase initialize app. This is required prior to using the Firebase instance. I'll create a method called sign in with Google that returns a future of type boolean and has the async decorator, since some of the tasks inside will be asynchronous and need to be waited on. Trigger the authentication flow by importing and instantiating the Google sign-in component. Fetch the Google sign-in account information by calling the sign-in method out of it. I'll do a simple validation and check whether the Google sign-in account is null or not and return false, otherwise proceed. Obtain the authentication details, type Google sign-in authentication out of the authentication property off of the Google sign-in account reference. Create a credential instance out of the access token and ID token obtained from the Google sign-in authentication reference. And finally, in order to fetch the details out of the user, such as name, email, and avatar image, use the Firebase auth instance and call the sign-in with credential method, passing the credentials. If this is successful, you should get a user credential object with all the info you need. Return true just to confirm that the execution ran all the way through. I'm gonna take this for a spin by testing it temporarily on the welcome page widget. I'll create an instance of the login service service class I just created and in the on click event, let's invoke the sign in with Google method. Capture the success flag and make sure to decorate it with a sync and await. If we get a success, is when we'll allow the user to go to the next page widget, the category list page widget. Let's hit some breakpoints. Hit run and debug. Hit the login button. Once you hit the Google sign in account instance, you should be able to get an embedded pop up window that takes you to the Google authentication page. Provide valid Google account credentials and sign in. The method comes back, and if you hover over the Google sign in account, you see that you get the values associated with this logged in user, such as display name, email, and photo URL. Now let's do a legit. So instead of instantiating the login service only on the welcome page, which only will make it accessible there, how can we make this service accessible throughout the application? Welcome to state management in Flutter using providers. Provider is a special widget that provides data and services to their descendants wherever you place it. It will make data and services trickle down to descendant widgets. In our case, we want to make the login service available throughout the app, so we make the material app a descendant of provider, allowing services to flow down into the material app and thus to all its child widgets. For making the provider work on our app, start by adding the provider package in the pubspec.yaml. As of the recording of this tutorial, this is the latest stable version. Proceed to add a provider widget at the very root of the app. Provider has a create callback where you return an instance of the service that you want to make available, in our case, the login service. Add the material app as its child by wrapping the provider around it. Wait, is that it? Yes, it is. Now all you have to do is access this instance from any descendant widget you want. Currently, we're only providing a single service instance. In later videos, I'll show you how to add more than one provider. Back in the welcome page, remove the instance we placed earlier and now fetch the login service, now via the provider. From inside any descendant widget with access to the build context, you can fetch it as follows. Call the provider.off static method with the type of the service being provided, pass in the context, and the listen equals false parameter. What this does is it fetches the provider instance, but it doesn't listen to changes and thus doesn't force the widget invoking it to rebuild. 
This is used when you only want to access the data, but you don't want the data in the model to change or rebuild your UI. Let's debug it once again. Google sign in kicks in. We provide our credentials. We go through the sign in workflow. It was successful, then it takes us to the next page. With that in place, let's proceed now to collect the Google user information provided by the Firebase Authentication Workflow. In my models, I'll create a class called Login User Model, which I'll use to encapsulate the info that I'm interested in, such as display name, email, and photo URL. I'm creating a separate model to hold these values so I can encapsulate the implementation as much as possible behind my custom models and services. Back in my login service, I'll create a property called user model type login user model. And I'll create a getter to make it read only so I can fetch it from any consumer of this service. I'll populate it upon receiving the user credentials with the required fields. For the signing out portion, I'll just do it really simple and I'll park it down here for later. This is as simple as creating an instance of the Google sign in and calling sign out on it. Make sure to decorate it with async and await since this is asynchronous. Afterwards, I'll just simply mark the user model property as null. Let's test what we've built so far. Okay, now we're set to consume the logged in user info here in the app bar for which I'll create a brand new widget to encapsulate this functionality. Find the main app bar widget and extract the widget structure that contains the avatar image. Create a file called user profile header and create a stateless widget with the same name. Add the return statement and paste the structure from the clipboard. Refactor it so we only work with the inner container widget. Let's add the show profile pick flag and corresponding constructor. Remember what we said earlier that you can access the provider and the services it provides from any descending widget? Simple. I'll just grab the same line of code we did on the welcome page widget and bring it onto the user profile header widget. Import the packages. Let's grab the login user model instance available in the login service via the provider. All I need at this point is the image path, so I'll just grab that for now. I want to add the condition that only when the show profile pick is true and there's an image, I show the photo, otherwise just show an empty box. Replace the hard-coded image asset by the photo URL using image network. Let's test this first iteration of this component. Go through the sign-in workflow. And notice how everywhere the main app bar shows, the user profile header widget pulls the login information regardless of how deep in the navigation hierarchy you are. The map user badge is still pulling hard-coded data, so let's apply the same treatment here as well in a minute. Now try to go into the application without signing in. Notice we don't show anything. There's just an empty box. Why? Because the user login model is null. Let's test it again to prove that this is not hard-coded anymore. Very nice. Now let's apply the same treatment here. And we'll replace the hard-coded name as well as the hard-coded image. Grab the login service provider line from the welcome page. Come to the map user batch widget and paste it here. Handle the imports. Same as in the user profile header widget. Get the login user model instance and extract both name and image. Create a flag that will determine whether this map user batch widget will show depending on whether the user is logged in or not. Replace the asset image by a network image and supply the image URL path. Same with the hard-coded user display name. Wrap this widget in a visibility widget and make it visible if show map user batch is true. Do a full rebuild and test access the app anonymously. There you go. The logic kicks in so as not to show the map user batch widget. Run it again. Now going through the signing workflow. Awesome. 
Now you can add an extra layer of security and personalization by allowing your users to authenticate using a Google account, leveraging the power of Firebase authentication. In later videos, here we will add a side menu bar with an option for the user to sign out, so stay tuned for that. In the next video, we'll deal with the sign out feature as well as adding a sidebar menu widget and more on Flutter state management using multi-providers. See you on the next one. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.